So can we start now? Yeah, uh, we are live. Uh, you can go ahead. Yeah. Hello and good afternoon, everyone. Thank you all for joining with us on our YouTube live. It's great to have you all with us uh, this afternoon. Uh, my name is Indranil Bhattacharya. I am currently studying at the diploma level and I will be your host for this session. Uh, as you all know already, this session is a part of the cricket and coding competition that was jointly launched by IIT Madras and NPTEL. And uh, for this session, we have a very special guest with us. Her name is Bhavna Priya. Uh, she is working at Deno Nissan Technology and Business Center India as a data scientist. And she has over four years of working experience. So uh, she will be talking about the, the computer vision and the application, various applications of uh, computer vision in the field of cricket. So without wasting much time, uh, I want to invite Bhavna. Go ahead to you, Bhavna. Yeah, thank you so much, Indranil, for such a lovely introduction. So I also want to thank uh, IIT Madras for having me here for this opportunity and to interact with such uh, intellectual audience, actually. So I think maybe this uh, session would be helpful for some people. Let's see how it goes. So yeah, let's get right into the uh, deck, OK? So basically, um, but before that, like uh, a little introduction would be good from my side. So I'm Bhavna, hello. And uh, I'm working in Renault Nissan as a data scientist for the like, past four years. And um, basically, I've done my graduation from uh, SRM and uh, in the CS background, okay. So this is about me. By the end of the uh, presentation, you guys can reach me out to my LinkedIn on my LinkedIn and basically see if anybody wants to make any connection, okay. So with, without any further ado, let's get into the presentation and see how we can, you know, enjoy computer vision. What is computer vision? How we can basically apply computer vision with cricket and how basically computer vision plays a role in the sports analytics sports so yeah let's get into that so um before that i think i need to basically tell what computer vision is okay so let's see so computer vision what is computer vision computer vision is that uh, field of ai uh, with which you know you can um, leverage the machines capabilities to analyze image data and video data okay so basically with image data and video data you can analyze that and um, this is how like computer vision comes into play so basically the first thing is how human vision and computer vision vary so for example you are a person you are a human and how do you perceive an object so you'd see the person right and what for example you have already known what that object is like for example um you are a normal person right and you see okay this is my phone okay so you know a phone looks like this right so in your memory you are going to basically see okay you already know that okay fine this is a phone so this is how you perceive an object okay and but this is not how a computer is going to see an object okay what is going to happen is for example Firstly, the input to the uh, machine would be using a, a camera or something, right, obviously. So let's suppose um, we are presenting and uh, we get an input from the camera, okay? That is the input. So now how the machine is going to view that object is basically it is going to uh, check how it is uh, basically in the trained model, it is going to see whether or not the uh, features are matching or not. So if the features are matching, with something that it is trained on, it is basically going to say, okay, yeah. So for example, if this example that we see, we see that this is an image of Virat Kohli. You as a human know that this image is of Virat Kohli. So let's suppose you have a trained model and that trained model has already known, okay, this is how Virat Kohli looks. So I've, for example, let's say I have um, a model which, uh, which I've trained on Virat Kohli, MS Dhoni, and the pictures of them. And so now my model is now capable of identifying that, okay, this is Virat Kohli. So for, for a human, we'll see, we'll match the image with Virat Kohli's features from our memories. And we are going to say, okay, bro, this is my Virat Kohli. This is my captain. This is our captain. But with respect to uh, computer, what is going to happen is the image is going to come and it is going to the train model is basically going to map the features and say okay fine i think i i am pretty sure that this guy is virat kohli this is my captain so this is how the computer vision and the normal human vision varies 
and uh, let's move ahead so uh, getting deep into like how and uh, how a machine basically uh, sees an image okay so now the thing is that uh, any image can be basically seen like uh, either as a rgb image or a, a grayscale image okay now this is going to vary now what happens when um, in the background the uh, image rgb image and the grayscale image varies is so you can see this is a colored image colored image is, is nothing but an rgb image what is rgb rgb refers to red green blue channels okay so any any image that you see okay any digital image that you see that you have on your mobile on your um, on your computer okay so that particular image for example if it's colored it will be consisting of three channels okay red green and blue and each value each uh, each pixel will be basically uh, coming into play so you can see right so basically these channels let's suppose this is a color image you can see we we have a good image of mahindra singh dhoni okay and you can see the image that is going to be in the background basically how the computer is going to basically how the machine is going to basically perceive it as as it will consist of three channels r g b and with respect to that the pixel values will be varying okay so let's suppose this is a 28 cross 28 uh, like 28 width and 28 height uh, size image so you will be having three channels okay three channels of both of all three of them having 28 cross 28 size okay now what will be happening for each pixel for each pixel let's suppose this portion this is a very small pixel okay let's assume this is a very small pixel which is uh, here okay so what let's suppose this uh, this will be here right so what it is going to basically do is like for each pixel it is going to calculate how much value of r g b will be there for example uh, you can check online how like other colors vary like for um, like for black it is like it will be zero 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 like all of them would be zero for that particular particular pixel for white it would be 255 255 255 so similarly for all of the colors we have pixel varying values so this is with respect to an rgb image okay and this is with respect to grayscale image in grayscale image what happens these channels disappear only one channel will be there and uh, that will be varying from 0 or 255 okay the pixel values either white or black okay and this is basically like whenever we are processing things it becomes easier for us to uh, work with uh, grayscale image because obviously there is a one uh, one channel data only okay so generally there are times when we are going to basically you know change it to grayscale image so if this is fine let's move ahead so now what happens is as you know that we are talking about computer vision right so computer vision's baseline is basically artificial neural network now what is artificial neural network so you can see right this is basically a brain uh, brain's neural network okay what happens with the brain this is basically an actual actual human brain's um, human brain's uh, um, this thing neural network okay what is going to happen you can see right the cell body the dendrites the axon what happens basically is like uh, and what artificial neural network is that basically we have made you know a small uh, small attempt to copy how this um, neural network system um, happens inside our head okay so for example dendrites are going to basically um, absorb the input okay they are going to take the input and this axon is basically responsible for giving the output here is the cell body similarly this is something that we have mimicked in an artificial neural network what is going to happen is the input here input layer is going to take input and the cell body or what you can say as the, the hidden layers in an artificial neural network in an ann that is going to basically take the inputs and basically it will provide an output okay so this is exactly how an actual human brain is being mimicked and uh, how we are going to basically um, process ahead the artificial neural networks okay now the reason being why we did this uh, because 
the way in human brain how we basically um, get the data get the input and send the output it is very uh, essential for us to know how this works okay so uh, you can see in this particular animation right that input is being provided and there is some series of neurons that are present so each node that you can see here right it can be considered as a neuron so this whole particular thing right you can consider this as the input and this out, as the output and in between this can be considered as the hidden layer okay if we check so this is what is happening in the artificial neural networks now let's get deep deeper into it uh, okay now what is going to happen now what is artificial neural networks it consists of basically a one only not one like feed forward neural network so what is feed forward neural network this is like the most basic artificial neural network okay now what happens in a feed forward neural network is information flows only in the forward direction now you can see these are the input okay so what you can uh, think it as that for example uh, you have an image okay so the pixels are being fed to the fed to the uh, network okay those are the input to your uh, network okay those are the input to your networks and what happens is in between some computations happen okay some computation is going to happen and finally the output is going to be sent to us the output is going to be uh, told us okay now what happens in a feed forward neural network is each Uh, value that is being uh, there in the input layer okay each node that is consisting of the in the input layer will be consisting of weights now these uh, connections you see right these connections are nothing but these will be the uh, this this will be consisting of weights okay now what happens is in a feed forward neural network the input is basically multiplied by the weight okay and for each neuron what happens is each uh, like for example let's take n2 right so we can say it is getting the input from x1 also and x2 also right so it is going to take uh, so some weight is assigned to this some weight is assigned to this right so n2 basically is going to uh, get an input as so let's suppose there's a weight connected to it okay let's suppose the weight connected to it x1 is w1 and the weight connected to x2 is w2 so what this particular n2 is going to get as an input is w1 x1 plus w2 x2 plus one bias okay so bias is basically going to be present and what is going to happen is now once this computation is done once this value is generated okay you can see all the computation are being done so the weight is there the value is there and the multiplication is happening and each is having a bias okay so adding the bias to each uh, multiplications of weight and the corresponding value of the input we are going to arrive at uh, some values okay now what is going to happen is only few neurons will be responsible for uh, sending the data ahead what do we say we say that it is being activated only the activated neurons are going to send the data ahead now how does the activated uh, neuron gets activated is because uh, is with the help of a activation function okay now the activation function comes into play and once this is calculated a uh, activation function is basically going to tell okay uh, this particular uh, neuron should be fired this particular neuron should be activated this particular neuron should send ahead the data so this is how the feed forward neural network works it means like the input is going to be taken the computations are has to be done with the uh, the multiplication of the weights and the input data and uh, the addition of bias on it and uh, then finally the activation uh, function uh, basically deciding whether or not that neuron will be fired or not okay and similarly uh, with these multiple uh, layers in the middle of the uh, input layer and the output layer these computations will happen here and then finally we'll get the output uh now there are different types of activation functions okay sigmoid tanh uh, relu softmax these basically depends on what type of uh, use case that you are uh, working on so let's suppose it's 
you want to classify some data okay you want to classify whether uh, this is a dog or not a dog okay then what you can do you can say okay i am creating my network i am creating my model i am creating an ann and i am going to basically use a sigmoid function okay so what sigmoid function will be responsible for sigmoid function will be responsible for telling me okay whether or not this uh, this uh, will be classified as a dog or not okay similarly we have different different activation functions on the basis of different different uh, use cases now for example if i have uh, multiple uh, classes okay i want to say okay i have my i have train i want to train a model uh, to detect whether or not uh, the model can um, tell me whether this is a dog cat uh, monkey whatever okay then i am going to use a softmax uh, softmax activation function now what why this because uh, like it is respond like it is capable of uh, doing the multi class classification now as you can see right so this particular uh, process of back propagation is where the training happens okay now the feed forward i have already explained right the feed forward is where uh, the input is going to come the weights are going to come into picture and all these things will happen the computations is going to happen okay all of this is a linear uh linear um linear function and linear process but activation function makes sure that it is uh, basically uh, getting some non linearity in it why because if it is because basically for example if we have the inputs here okay and we have linear functions all over the network then here the model won't be very uh, feasible for us because the model will not be able to train properly why because at the end also it will only be capable of having the linear data right it will only be having linear so now to introduce the non linearity we have introduced the activation functions now this is what happens in feed forward now what is back propagation back propagation is basically where your model actually trains okay so for example uh, this is a image of five the the character five the number five okay and let's suppose this is um 28 cross 28 okay and the size of this particular uh, image is 28 cross 28 i mean 28 as the width and 28 as the height okay now what is going to happen is uh, this particular uh, pixels so 28 cross 28 is 784 right so all those 784 uh, pixels will be provided here okay as then input to the new input to my system or input to my neural network okay now 784 is going to basically uh, pixels are going to paint to picture and this is going to basically get computed move ahead and on the basis of activation function some of them are getting activated now what happens in the end so for example uh, in the output layer i am getting some uh, some value okay so this is a image of 5 okay so the highest value of it let's suppose the neuron says uh, i am 6 okay it is saying that i think that this particular so basically in the first uh, first iteration this says okay i think this is a 6 but is this a 6 no right so what is going to happen is and in the end a loss basically is going to be calculated what is this loss loss is basically like how your model should actually predict what it should be and what the model is actually predicting okay so the difference between the actual and the predicted one is the loss so what this this back propagation does is it makes sure it ensures that it adjusts the weight such that every iteration that it does uh, in some way when whenever the final output layer fires some neuron it should come as 5 so this uh journey of propagation forward propagation back propagation forward propagation back propagation will result in training this training can take like hours or so so basically this is back propagation where your model actually trains what is going to happen uh the output layers are basically going to be multiplied with the weights and similarly uh, it is going to pass through this network again and we are basically going to uh, adjust the weight such that in the output layer whenever we get uh, we get closest to you know this model predicting this as fine okay. 
now um so basically how we can uh, like leverage the computer vision's capability in sports so there are various use cases where like computer vision comes into play with respect to sports so this is a person detection right you can see right like the bounding boxes bounding boxes is nothing but basically it is uh, mentioning okay i i think the person is here okay so this is what a bounding box means so we can see there are certain bounding boxes right across every person that it can uh, see so what would be going in the background is a model would have been predicting that okay uh, this is um, this is a person and these are the persons that i can find on the field and these are the uh, players that i can find on the field okay so basically this can be used for tracking how the uh, person is performing on the field how the person is basically um, moving in the field and how basically we can strategize basically like how it should uh, further you know perform not just with respect to uh, person tracking or ball tracking or any other, uh, other things i think there are other use cases as well this is with respect to the person tracking okay now with respect to ball tracking i think everybody is watching cricket okay everybody watches cricket here right that's why you have come to this uh, mm, session right so ball tracking is something that i think from 2014 or 2015 uh, it has been introduced and uh, you can see right whenever a ball is been thrown and uh, suppose you have to basically see that whether or not it was uh, let's suppose uh, hitting the wicket or not okay so recently you have been seeing like from the past 7 8 9 10 years you, you must have been seeing that now the trajectory of the ball is also uh, like shown on the screen right what is this this is nothing but this is a use case of uh, i mean this is basically a use case of computer vision computer vision is playing in the background for this particular thing it is nothing but an object tracking so the ball is being tracked over the field now with respect to person tracking ball tracking we can also do the speed analysis okay how the uh, like for example in f1 if there are any f1 fans here you guys can know right that uh, how the actually vehicle moves how the vehicle moves how the vehicle is moving the speed of it can be calculated using it how it can be calculated basically the um, object is going to come and i'm going to identify okay this is a car and i'm going to see okay how fast is it is going i'm going to calculate the speed over the uh, re over real time okay and apart from that there's one more thing one more use case that i can think of right now that is posture detection so for example there are times right when a posture is of main importance when it comes to sports right so in the posture detection we can ensure right that the user or the player or the uh, any any sports person right uh, can check whether the posture is right or not okay basically for example if uh, i am a sports person okay and um, i go and uh, in my academy there is no coach as of now so my coach is uh, absent today so what what can we do we can say bro let's let's have one system let's have an intelligent ai tell us whether or not our posture is correct or not okay that particular machine can help us tell okay my posture is right my posture is not wrong my post uh, posture is wrong i need to improve or basically uh i am moving how i am moving all these use cases are coming into play when we talk about computer vision with sports okay now let's suppose uh, the first thing that i said right that was with respect to the uh, posture detection right so you can see right this particular image okay what is this image this is nothing but this is pose estimation what is pose estimation pose estimation is nothing but a computer vision technique that is used to you know predict the configuration of the body from an image so you can see right the person is standing there with the, whether it's mr bean or ms dhoni we can apply the model to identify how the pose is uh, there for the um there for the person okay basically how the person is being uh, like identified and after being identified how it's basically uh, standing or how it's basically you know um coming into picture like how it is uh, getting uh, into the form or not okay so this is with respect to pose estimation now if you you can use like uh, 
many things with respect to pose estimation okay you can uh, use uh, deep sort with the uh, yolo and uh, many other things that can be used you can use open cv for it and uh, many other things you can use media pipe so this particular image that you see right this was uh, using the uh, media pipe so i created this using the media pipe so if you have if you guys have a little bit of time and if you guys feel that you know what i want to learn how this is happening and if you are guys interested with python then you can go and search on the internet what is media pipe how we can leverage media pipe to you know do the pose estimation and uh, yeah that is the thing so once the image is uh, sorry once the person is detected once the uh, object is detected we are basically responsible for uh, like mapping the um, key uh, key points okay key points of the object now what is key points where can we use this key points these key points are nothing but uh, how it is going to uh, differentiate okay how this person is standing or in a form or not a form okay now there are lots and lots of use cases for these key points it comes into play uh in pose detection pose estimation it comes into play when we are talking about facial recognition so your data points of the face that's also uh, you know uh, like uh, that's also a use case for this particular key points okay how you can um, basically uh, so that is with respect to face recognition so all these kinds of things comes into play when we talk about pose estimation okay now ball tracking so you guys see right for example in this image we can see like this is i think from 9 10 years only it's not very very early from very early on but uh, from 9 10 years you can see right we we now see the whole trajectory whether or not it's uh, whether or not the ball is hitting the wicket and it is it's very essential for us to uh, not for us but the people like the umpires and the people in the decision making to you know ensure uh, whether or not the decision was rightly taken or not so you can see right original decision out but what basically is making sure that the uh, trajectory of the ball is uh, properly um, properly mapped it's again object detection object tracking okay so we are leveraging object tracking when it comes to uh, these use cases so you can see right that uh, this is how it happens right you can see that a ball is coming and the whole trajectory can be mapped how the ball is moving where the ball is moving the trajectory of it is basically uh, something that we can map and it is basically one of the most helpful things that is uh, being uh, like used currently in the uh, cricket domain right and they are basically actually using it in real time to um map how the ball uh, moves in on a pitch and how the ball is going to basically uh like rightly moving or not right so i think this is one with respect to the uh, ball tracking i think there is one more use case when we uh, talk about object tracking so i think recently like from uh, one or two years only i think i have seen that on the ground you guys can see uh, the person and a round circle if you guys uh, watch ipl you might see like now also it's uh, you can see it so on the person a round circle will be uh, mentioned and uh, in that the person's name will be there right what is that that is person tracking okay now what is uh, of main essence here when we talk about object detection or object tracking is whether or not the object is present okay first thing is object detection and classification what is classification whether or not this is a person or not it will be futile for us right to uh, do the classification on anything right so basically uh, it needs to first identify where is my region of interest where is my object whether or not this object is the thing that i need or not okay so i need to basically see whether or not i have a ball so first thing is basically i have to have a model which can tell me okay this is a ball okay once it is classified as ball it is going to move ahead for the tracking right so this is with respect to uh, how uh, the object tracking comes into play so the various reasons why we can use object detection for ball tracking is it helps us obviously do, uh, during decision making during the match so obviously not everybody is as sharp as dhoni right we do not have dhoni review system all the time 
so it is come it is very essential for us to you know see how this uh, this ball is being uh, mo- moving okay so this is one thing another thing that we can think of is preparing strategy uh, strategies for players okay so for example um you can see right when they are uh, giving the in the live commentary they are basically uh, telling okay uh, we have seen that um, for virat kohli uh, this 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 particular week in weak regions uh, the ball was um, thrown okay so for uh, categorizing the weak uh, points the strong points how we can create a strategy for each player how we can make sure that uh, we can uh, you know leverage cv's uh, computer visions uh, um, powers to you know strategize better uh, object detection and uh, cv can be used now the thing is what can be used so if if you are in la- uh, if in layman terms i can tell there are various ways you can uh, do this because now there are multiple 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 uh, things that are provided like for example tensor flow ultra analytics is major which is basically providing yolo tensor flow provides tensor flow detection open cv is there open cv is of great importance when it comes to uh, computer vision it's like the bible of computer vision so like um, compu- open cv as uh, open cv is very uh, crucial similarly tensor flow object detection yolo is also very important all of these are basically uh, object detection uh, object detection and object uh, can be used for object tracking okay so you can have a model and train it from uh, the tensor object detection api that is being provided by the ultralytics so they have the pre trained model and they have the code over the github and you can leverage that and basically it's so open uh, like uh, available or openly and it's open source so you can leverage that to basically uh train your own model on custom data set and uh, it basically um you know use it now the tensor flow object detection is already trained on 80 uh, like uh 80 um, objects okay so you can check online like on what um, object it is you know already trained on so if it if it is something that it is already trained on you can use that model itself to predict uh, whatever you want but if you want to basically go ahead for custom uh, custom you know, object detection then you need to use those pre trained uh, pre trained models and everything okay so this is with respect to object detection for ball tracking now uh, this is a very small uh, very small you know brief about uh, yolo so yolo is what you only look once okay so this is with respect to one of the uh frameworks that we are talking about when we talk about um, the object detection okay and yolo is a very very powerful uh, framework that can provide us object detection in a very small time and on a, and on a very accurate uh, basis okay so you can see right there are se- separate separate uh, like um, models that we can have we can have yolo v5s yolo v5m yolo v5l yolo v5xl okay now what are these these are nothing but basically uh, so you can see on the graph right this particular x axis is for the time and this is basically for the uh, um, uh, this y axis is basically for the accuracy okay so as you see that as the uh, the chronology goes like this as it moves ahead like small medium large extra large it is going to basically um, increase the efficiency but take much time okay now yolo v5s is of great importance when you have to basically uh, have a model in uh, in in an edge device okay so for example camera or anything so we need a lightweight model right when uh, we need to deploy it on something like camera or something so for that we leverage the yolo v5s and okay so now uh, i'll give a very short brief about uh, yolo okay so what is yolo so you can see right how this works is you can have an uh, s s by s grid as the input like suppose this image is a 340 pixel uh, 340 uh, by ha- height and 340 by um, width okay so what is basically being calculated in the background by the yolo 
is it is not going to going to uh, basically tell me which classes it is it is going to be uh, belonging to but it is also going to uh, make sure that the object localization is happening what is object localization object localization is where that image is present i mean where that object is present and what is this confidence confidence is basically uh, that the model is telling okay fine i'm 80% sure that this particular thing is definitely a dog and this particular thing is i'm 20% sure that this is a cat and 90% sure it's uh, it's this dog so like that okay and in the final detections you can see the uh, the object along with the uh, bounding box where is it present so this is basically a bicycle this is basically uh, a dog and the rightly uh, localized uh, bounding box across it okay now for the resources you can uh, like uh, use these particular links like for uh, i told you right that open cv is of great importance when you talk about uh, image processing so all the image cleaning and all the uh, prerequisites and other things as well like other uh, algos and um, other use cases like post detection and all those things can be done using open cv like number plate detection all these kinds of things can be uh, leveraged using the open cv now uh, pillow also is of great importance when you have to like for example check the image size decrease it increase it improve it so pillow also is with respect to that uh, in python and it is of great importance when you talk about computer vision and uh, these two yolo v5 and the tensor flow is um, basically how the these particular links are basically this is going to redirect you to the github links and you are going to uh, like you can basically uh, take the data from there and uh, not the data like uh, the um, whole framework from there and you can use that to uh, train on your own uh, custom data set or use the uh, model to train it on the uh, like objects is already trained on so this is all about today and this is all about computer vision with cricket so yeah thank you thank you her it was really a great session you explained so many uh, deep concepts uh, within a small time window so thank you havna and i want to thank all the participants who joined us today on this zoom call and over the youtube uh, all the slides and these code blocks will be shared with you uh, in your student email id so please uh, check your uh, uh, uh email and uh, i hope you have learned something new and you can explore further um uh, if if you guys have any questions you can uh, post it on your in this chat box yeah so thank you so much everyone i think everybody uh, got to learn something i guess <laughs> if not then tell me what i can do other than that uh, you guys can uh, like reach out to me on linkedin and uh, basically in the nil you can uh, drop the link to my linkedin here and basically if you want to uh, deep dive into it and see how the code of this is working then i'll do one thing i am going to basically put all the codes in my github link and you guys can access that thank you so much ma'am thank you so much for having me I'll post uh, Bhavna's uh, LinkedIn profile here in the chat. Yeah, I'll just give me one second. I'll. Uh... Yeah, well, no, I'm posting it. No problem. Okay, okay, okay. Yeah.